The Gospel according to Luke, chapter 12. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Let me start by thanking you for inviting me into your worship life this morning. I do appreciate this opportunity and Bishop Susan's invitation to take part in the Summer Sermon Series again this year. I am joining you from Winnipeg, from Treaty 1, the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota peoples, and the homeland of the Métis Nation. I'm grateful for their stewardship of this land and their hospitality, which allows us to live, work, and serve God the Creator here. Now, I have a few people in my life who I would describe as anxious. It's not that they're always on edge. They don't look frazzled all the time and they don't get spooked by loud noises or anything like that. But in some circumstances, their anxiety just rises and rises until it has a negative effect on their ability to cope. And it can impact the people around them. I find that sometimes when I'm around these people in my life, my anxiety goes up too. It's almost as if anxiety makes me anxious. So instead of being a calming presence, I add fuel to the fire. Instead of being a person that can help others cope with anxiety and make things manageable, I sometimes add another layer of anxiety where it is definitely not needed. And needless to say, that is not always the most helpful way of calming or reassuring people. Now parts of today's reading remind me of that. Now between last week's reading and this week's reading, we missed an important teaching from Jesus in Luke's Gospel. We miss the section where he tells his followers and the crowds not to worry. He told them not to worry about their lives, what they will eat or what they will wear. And by comparison, he asked them to consider the lilies and how valuable something as perishable as the lilies are in God's eyes. Now, maybe that sounds familiar to you. Our reading today follows on the heels of that. And to be fair, the first sentence of today's reading follows very much on that same theme. But then things fall off the rails a bit. Sell everything we own and give away the proceeds? Be on guard at all times? Watch out for people breaking into your house? Always be alert? I mean, it's not just today's reading either. In this whole section of Luke's Gospel, the part about not worrying is sandwiched between a series of stories of being called an evil generation, warnings against hypocrisy, threats of beatings and rejection, divided families, and repenting or else. I mean, sorry, Jesus, I know you said don't worry, but all that other stuff is making me worry even more. I mean, it doesn't help that we're already in a heightened state of anxiety about many things. And how can we not be? Events and actions in our communities and around the world causes us our anxiety to rise and rise. Each day we hear news and updates about the war in Ukraine, not to mention other wars that are ongoing in many parts of the world. 
We hear about the hundred million people around the world who have been displaced as a result of conflict or persecution. How can we not be anxious about the state of the world? And we hear about wildfires in BC and other regions, evidence of climate change that many decision makers can't agree about how to address. We wonder about how changes in policy might affect our livelihoods and how we can care for the environment and family at the same time. How can we not worry? As we approach the International Day of the World's Indigenous People on August 9th, we think about the ongoing social and economic issues facing our Indigenous brothers and sisters after generations of racism, abuse, and neglect. We think about how other communities are marginalized. People of color, people who identify with the 2SLGBTQIA community, those living with physical or mental disabilities. We wonder about how our communities can include all people and how that will mean that we need to change. How can we not worry? And coming off of two plus years of uncertainty about employment, we're faced with record setting inflation and rising housing prices that we haven't seen in decades. We're unsure if we have to uproot and move homes or if we can afford rent and food at the same time. We don't know how long this will last or what other changes might come as a result. How can we not worry? And every time we listen to the world leaders and government party spokespeople, we hear more extremism, more volatility, more inflexibility more grandstanding and self-interested decisions, more people claiming to speak for everyone when they do not. We wonder why our leaders seem unable to work together for the benefit of all, rather than for their own agenda. And we wonder if or when there will be an end. So how can we not worry? Well, Jesus' response through most of today's gospel reading is not an explanation of why we shouldn't worry. Instead, it is a call to action. He asks us to be alert and to do something. But it's really important for us to understand that that call to action is based on a fundamental promise from God. No matter what might be going on around us, no matter what threats or challenges may cause us to worry, God's desire and pleasure is to give us the kingdom. Before anything we do, we first hear the promise that God gathers us and gifts us something that can help ease our worry. See, we need to remember that in Luke's gospel, the kingdom of God is not a far-off destination or something that we only encounter after death. The kingdom is the constant, small, but powerful ways that God breaks into this world now to show us glimpses of God's intention for all of creation. It is how we see God's work of creation continuing to unfold and overcoming the sin that distorts and attempts to ruin what God has made. And so Jesus says, don't worry. Yes, there will be threats. And yes, we will be asked to live out our faith in action. But those actions are a response to and are rooted in God giving us the kingdom just as a loving parent in, enjoys or finds joy in giving good gifts to their children. We inherit this gift because of our baptism and when we are named and claimed by God. We are given this, this gift when God makes a covenant with us in water and word. And when we go to live out our part, to proclaim Christ in word and deed, to care for others in the world God made, to work for justice and peace, we know that God has already promised to be a part of that work with us. We are reminded that Jesus is the shepherd of this little flock that God has gifted and promised with the kingdom. So let's do that. Let's work for justice and peace, knowing that God allows us and invites us to do so. Be leaders in your congregations and ministries who reach out to the people who have been excluded from our communities. And knowing that God has generously given us gifts, let's let go of some of our own things that keep us from doing ministry in the places where God is leading us. Let the Spirit of God speak to us and through us into the world. 
Let it change us and move us so that we are ready and able to serve the people and the communities that God has placed in our path. We won't lose anything by doing that. We won't lose anything by doing that because God has promised us the kingdom already and no one will ever take that away. I pray that this day you find peace in God and understanding in God's word to eternal life. Amen.